Again, I am so glad that all of you are here tonight. It is such a joy to be together on this wonderful feast, the beginning of our redemption, the beginning of our salvation. Kind of a fulcrum in the history of the world. The world was going one way, Jesus came, and human history did a 180. A whole different hope that we now have because of this night. I thought we could first of all take a step back and say, what are we celebrating today? The bottom line of Christmas is that it is a story about God, about a God who loves us so much that he takes the initiative, he starts the ball rolling. He sent his son to be born, and as you know, to die and rise again so that we could live with him forever in heaven. But it's a story of love, the story of sacrifice, story of suffering, as you can see from the cross, but also a story of redemption, a whole new chance for you and me. That story is the, actually the core of who we are. We find our identity in this story. You want to know who you are? Go to Jesus Christ, which tells us that we are so loved by God, every one of us, that his only son came to live among us and save us from our sins and bring us to eternal life. That's how much he loves us. The story of this night, obviously, is an incredible love story. We are called to form our lives around that incredible story. So it really is the center of our life, of who we are. Of course, what makes this story so amazing, even unique, is that the mighty God who created the heavens, the earth, who's all-powerful, all-knowing, comes to us not in power or glory or majesty, but as a little baby. The God of the universe comes to us as a little newborn babe. Think for a second what it's like when you're around a baby. I bet all of us are pretty much the same. You look at the baby's eyes and they look black back unblinking at you. You kiss the baby, you make goo-goo sounds in a vocabulary that you would never normally use, right? We all do that. You hold and cradle the baby. You slowly rock, kind of sway back and forth. Um, I'm sort of an expert in this. I have eight brothers and 33 nieces and nephews, and at the last count, 51 great nieces and nephews. We're going for 100, right? <laughs> 33 times, I think we can do it, I think we can do it. Um, and I'm always amazed at how one baby can in entertain an entire room of adults. Have you ever noticed that? There could be eight, 10, 12 adults in a room, and the one baby, that's a perfect ratio. You know, he, he's got the whole room there. Uh, they're so beautiful. Last Christmas morning, I was with, uh, among other people, my grandnephew Hank. Hank was a little over three, not quite four, last Christmas. And he opened up his presents, there was a lot of them, maybe 12 or 15 presents. And with each one, he'd open up and he'd go, I always wanted this. <laughs> so precious, and he'd open another one, I always wanted this. We, the whole night, we were all just laughing. He, Hank didn't know it, but he was doing everything to inspire his mom and dad to go out and buy him 15 more presents. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was so precious. The point is, our God is clever as well as wise. He wants us to let him into our hearts. Christmas is all about letting him in to our heart. So he comes to us as a baby, small and weak. He doesn't try to take control but, or to have us be changed. We are changed by discovering his loving presence, that he's always there with us. You might say that God pursues us at Christmas as a little child. I was getting a couple ready for marriage oh, a couple years ago, and a couple had a great sense of humor. We laughed a lot. At one point, the, the, the woman said, you know, uh, Father, he chased me and chased me until I caught him. <laughs> and I thought, that's a great definition for God. It's a wonderful definition for God, that he comes to us like this little baby, non-threatening, easy, hoping that we'll make him the Lord and center of our life. But he's actually the pursuer, and we are the pursued. 
He chases and chases us until we catch him. Pope Francis said, whenever we take a step toward Jesus, he's already there waiting for us with open arms. How do we respond to this newborn king? Hopefully, the same way that the shepherds did and the same way that the wise men did. That is, on our knees. Where we belong in the face of Jesus is adoring him, worshiping him, honoring him. We kneel before him and take him as our Lord and as our God. I recommend to all of you during this Christmas season, spend some time right here in our Adoration Chapel. Half an hour, an hour, just spend some time in adoration with our Lord. Some quiet time to worship him. Open your heart to him. Bring him your joys. Bring him your struggles. Ask for his help. Say, Lord, I've been working on this all by myself, and it's not working that well. Now I'm going to let you take the lead. And see what happens. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Finally, I've done this the last two or three Christmases, and there's been some wonderful stories that have come from it. It's my uh, six-week invitation. So if you're not currently going to Mass on a regular basis, you've heard the thing of do something six times in a row without breaking the chain, and you will have formed a new good habit. So if you don't go to Mass on a regular basis, we already got number one under your belt tonight, right? So go to Mass five more Sundays in a row and see if you, don't, if you haven't started a new good habit of attending Sunday Mass. Uh, come to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. Come to receive grace upon grace from your Lord. Come to have that personal encounter with God. And see if you don't have a new holy habit at the end of the next six weeks. And blessed Christmas to all of you.